welcome back to my channel. My name is Evelyn and today we are talking about my most anticipated contemporary reads of the first half of 2020. I've dedicated the month of January to these kinds of videos and I've already put out several. In two of those videos I've already mentioned some contemporary reads so I'm gonna rattle those off now just in case you're looking for them in this video. They won't be here but I will link the videos that they are mentioned in down below. In my anticipated sequels video I talked about Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston and in my anticipated LGBT books video I talked about We Used to Be Friends by Amy Spaulding, The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper, Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez, Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan, I Kissed Alice by Anna Birch, Six Angry Girls by Adrian Kisner, If We Were Us by K.L. Walther, and I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. I will be doing a second video like this one around June or July focusing on anticipated reads for the second half of the year since we don't have as much information about release dates for that half of the year yet. Today I'm just going to be focusing on January through June. First up is Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed, which releases on February 4th. Jamie Goldberg is terrible at speaking with strangers. He's fine volunteering with his local state senate candidate, but he draws the line at canvassing. That is until he meets Maya. Maya herself is having a terrible Ramadan. Her best friend is too busy to spend time with her, she's no longer going on the summer trip she was anticipating, and her parents are splitting up. Her mother's solution? Political canvassing with a very awkward stranger. This is a romance novel partially written by one of my favorite romance authors of all time, Becky Albertalli. Becky is just one of those authors that I will always pick up anything that she writes, so I'm very excited to be picking this up when it releases, which as I'm filming this is in exactly a month. Next we have The Feminist Agenda of Jemima Kincaid by Kate Hadamer, which releases on February 18th. I'm in love with the first line of this book's official synopsis, which is, Jemima Kincaid is a feminist and she thinks you should be one too. But if that's not enough to sell you and you want to know the actual plot, here you go. Jemima attends a private school that is filled to the brim with what she views as problematic traditions. So when she's named to senior triumvirate alongside Jock Andy and popular girl Jennifer, she finds herself in charge of the worst one of all, prom. It's heteronormative and sexist and positively medieval. Her solution? A last chance dance. Every student will privately submit a list of their crushes to a website that will pair them with any mutual matches. So feminist agenda aside, just this concept of a last chance dance and the drama that I know will inevitably bloom from its existence makes me want to read this book. <laughs> Next we have the first of two Sanja Menon books on this list, Of Curses and Kisses by Sanja Menon releases on February 18th. Princess Jaya Rao's family has been locked in a centuries-long feud with the Emerson family and the most recent target was her little sister. So when Jaya finds out she'll be attending the same elite boarding school as Grey Emerson, she sees an opportunity for revenge. Her plan? To make Grey fall in love with her and then break his heart. This is the first book in a series of fairy tale retelling set at this private school that Sanja is doing and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I'm very excited because I have loved all three of her other books and I'm very excited to see what she does with one of my favorite storytelling techniques which is a retelling so we're very excited for this. Next we have What I Like About You by Marissa Cantor, which releases on April 7th. Paula Levitt met her best friend online. His name is Nash, he's a graphic novelist, they share a love of books, and she feels as if she can tell him anything, except for who she really is. Online, Hallie goes by the name of Kells, the writer behind One True Pastry, a popular YA book blog that pairs its reviews with custom cupcakes. When she moves to her grandfather's small town, she finds herself face to face with the real life Nash who has no idea who she really is. She's afraid that if she tells him it will ruin their online friendship, but the more time she spends with him in real life, the more she begins to fall for him, which is an issue because he's already in love with Kells. First of all, an online book blogger is the main character. How could I not love that? Second of all, 
baked goods. Third of all, this is a take on one of my very favorite tropes of all time, which is love before first sight. These two have met and have become friends, and in Nash's case have fallen in love without knowing who the other person is, and I am a sucker for that, and so I am very excited to be picking this book up in April. In fact, it comes out right before my birthday, so perhaps I'll gift it to myself. <laughs> Unscripted by Nicole Kronzer releases on April 21st. Zelda Bailey Cho has dreams for her future, from improv camp to Second City to Saturday Night Live. When she lands a spot on the varsity team at a prestigious improv camp, she knows she'll get to perform for professional scouts like her hero, Nina Knightley. But she's the only girl on the varsity team, which makes her a target for humiliation from her male teammates. The Life in Medieval Times of Kit Sweetly is set to release on May 5th. Kit Sweetly wants to become a knight like her brother. She's got all the right moves and her family could use the money that comes with knighthood. But the cheesy medieval themed restaurant where they work only lets girls become waitresses, aka winches. Kit decides to take her brother's place and when she reveals her identity at the end of the show, she becomes an internet sensation. But management is not pleased. She won't go down without a fight though, and there are other winches willing to join her on her quest for equality. Doesn't this just sound awesome? I love contemporaries that give you a peek into a world that you don't really think about, and this is one of them for me. Like, the world of like medieval times and this sort of like dinner theater trick writing show. I actually have been to medieval times. All of the knights, as far as I could tell, were men. And yeah, that's not cool because women women can do writing just as well as men can. I say, as a person from Oklahoma who sees a lot of ladies riding horses, More Than Maybe by Aaron Hahn is set to release on May 12th. Luke Greeley grew up under his punk rock father's spotlight, but he prefers anonymously co-hosting a podcast with his twin brother Cullen to any sort of fame. In fact, his real love lies in writing songs and also in his huge unrequited crush on music blogger Veda Carswell. Veda has the next five years of her life planned out. She has secured a job at Loud Lizard learning from local legend Phil Josephs and taking over his music blog. She's been accepted into Berkeley's music journalism program. Now she just needs to manage Ann Arbor's summer concert series and get herself a Rolling Stone internship. Romance not on her list. So why is it when she hears Luke Greeley singing about some mystery girl on his podcast that she really wishes it were her? Next we have By the Book by Amanda Sellett, which is set to release on May 12th. Mary Porter Malcolm is a lover of classic novels, which is why she knows about all the mistakes that have been made by impressionable young women. When a girl from school is tricked by a scoundrel of a boy, Mary is inspired to create the Scoundrel Survival Guide, which outlines the types of boys to avoid at all costs based on men from literature. But when the number one boy on her list turns out to be incredibly charming, Mary finds herself falling despite her best intentions. Perhaps real life doesn't follow the same rules as fiction after all. So when I read this, I actually laughed out loud because me? <laughs> I have not a lot of real life relationship experience, so I often end up applying lessons I've learned from fictional couples to my real life. In fact, I actually made a video almost a year ago now where I listed off some different rules for relationships that I'd picked up from different fictional characters. And so I will link that video down below, but I'm very excited to read this because it feels like Perhaps Mary and I might be similar human beings, and I'm really interested to see her story. Next we have Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, which releases on May 12th. When a plane crashes on the way from New York to the Dominican Republic, Camino and Yahira Rios both lose their father and discover each other. Sisters they never knew existed. This is All Your Fault by Amina May Safi releases on June 9th. Rin Oliviera is planning on confessing to her longtime crush. Daniela Corres is a poet, but nobody else knows it. Imogen Azar is just trying to make it through the day. When the three girls clock into work on the first day of summer, they aren't expecting to learn that Wild Night's bookstore is going to be closing its doors. They end up teaming up for a day, working together to save their indie bookstore. Basically any book that's about a bookstore, I'm gonna want to read, 
And the fact that this one is set in a day, I really love narratives like that. And then also just the fact that they're trying to save the story. Like, it just sounds like it's gonna be extremely fun and I'm extremely down for it. Next, we have Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon, which is set to release on June 16th. Rowan Roth and Neil McNair have been rivals all throughout high school, but when Neil is named valedictorian, Rowan knows she has one last chance to beat her nemesis. It's the last day of senior year, and Howell, a senior class game, is set to take her all across Seattle on a farewell tour. But when she learns that a group of seniors is out to get them, she decides to make a reluctant alliance with Neil. They will team up until they're the final players left, and then they will destroy each other. So I graduated high school a little over six months ago now, and I have been very nostalgic about that time lately. Just having finished my first semester of college and being back home all year last year and I feel like probably going into this next year as well, I'm gonna be very drawn to narratives that are about high school, especially the end of high school, and this is one of them. So I'm very excited. Also, I really wanna know more about this Howl thing. Like, what is it? What is it? And then also, they're gonna fall in love and it's gonna be great. And last but not least, Another Sanja Menon, 10 Things I Hate About Pinky, releases on June 30th. I'm really excited about this because I did greatly enjoy the Pinky Samir dynamic in There's Something About Sweetie, and I knew that she was putting out another book with these characters, and I was like, it's gonna be these two, and I was right. I shipped it in the previous one, and so I'm gonna ship it really hard in this one. All right, that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more from my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I will be making a second set of most anticipated videos for the second half of the year sometime in either June or July. So if you want to know when those videos are posted, you should ring that bell icon and be notified whenever I post a new video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little mini series I've been doing for January. We will be back to our regularly scheduled random programming for February, although I do have some romance themed ideas up my sleeve. But with that being said, my name is Evelyn. I make new videos every magical Monday and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.